Hi, my name is Dr. Alexander Antipov, and I'm oral maxillofacial surgeon uh, in uh, uh, Roseville, California. Uh, I, uh, my practice is uh, uh, heavily specializing on uh, dental implant surgeries, and uh, we try to help uh, patients with their most difficult cases that come. Uh, I would like to discuss uh, one of the patients uh, that we treated and uh, show the uh, approach uh, to the edentulous uh, uh, patient, the patient that does not have any teeth uh, in the mouth or losing them, and uh, how do we rehabilitate the edentulous uh, mouth uh, there are different ways, and this is uh, this particular treatment was uh, selected uh, for this particular uh, particular individual. Let's see how we did it. Uh, when we uh, met uh, uh, Alexandra, she was uh, 54 years old, uh, and uh, she presented with uh, about 25 years of uh, complete upper jaw. Uh, complete denture. Complete edentulism uh, was done when she was in her 30s. Uh, and uh, she had uh, two uh, bad teeth retained on the bottom for the uh, almost a partial, you know, full, almost like a full denture. Uh, and uh, she came to us with a chief complaint that she can't tolerate the dentures anymore and she really wants to have uh, something fixed in her mouth that she doesn't have to remove uh, every night. And our, and our philosophy is that nobody should go uh, to sleep uh, with uh, the with idea of putting uh, their plastic teeth in a bottle of water. So uh, we really like doing implants, and uh, this is my true passion, and that's what we uh, do. So let's, let's see how we uh, turn that uh, patient into the uh, fixed uh, uh, hybrid prosthesis uh, in her case. So uh, there are uh, two uh, things about Alexandra. is uh, She uh, did not really want to have... Um, uh, her, um, uh, she did not really wanted to have uh, um, zygoma implants done, and that's what I offered her is to place because she had such a huge resorption of her uh, zone three maxilla here and here, and this is zone one, which was again very very small bone. Well, we almost had you know n no bone here, uh, and uh, she had very narrow bone in zone two. So she wasn't a classic all on four case with zone one and zone two implants. Uh, she did not want zygoma implants. And uh, after all those discussions with patients, you realize some patients just do not want certain things done and you have to offer them alternatives. So the alternative for this case would be uh, some on leg grafting in the premaxilla to uh, make this bone thicker for implant and sinus lifts. Well, uh, you know, those sinus lifts are really giant uh, sinus lifts, and uh, we uh, offered her to use a, a BMP solution, and this case was done, um, again, in 2010. So that was, uh, uh, you know, not a relatively new approach, but something that we uh, uh, was new to our practice, and uh, so we decided to use BMP. Um, So we'll look at uh, one more picture here. And we'll look at the mandible. You know, we can see the mandible is uh, really difficult too because her mental framing comes all the way to the top and all the way to the top here. She did not want any uh, augmentations done uh, on the bottom. So she just wanted to have four implants done uh, in the available bone. Um, Vertically, she was challenged uh, to place short implants even. Uh, and again, her mental foramen uh, is right there on the uh, uh, right side. And uh, this is another image tracking the nerve. And this is the other image uh, of the left side and tracking the nerve on the left side. Again, uh, mental foramen is right at the crest. Uh, so angulation of the implant, uh, if we would have some bone up here, we could angle it further posterior. So the posterior table of the implant is, uh, uh, is positioned posterior so she can have more teeth. So in this case, uh, uh, that was our challenge as well. So with all this in mind, uh, and this is the panoramic view, we would go for the surgery. And uh, 3D again. 
I, so we did the upper jaw first because we knew we would just go and do the mandible uh, in one uh, in one setting. So we did the upper first, uh, and we grafted uh, uh, the upper jaw. We did some onlay grafts, and. Uh, Uh, this is our sinus lifts, uh, which we have the video for. Uh, this is the sinus lift on the left side, and this is the sinus lift on the right side. So we achieved approximately two centimeters of bone. Uh, height and width uh, is adequate to place dental implants. So we can see there's an ostium there. Uh, this is our own leg graft that took nicely so we could place a nice implant here. This is the other sinus lift right there on the left side. And this is the scan with bilateral sinus lifts. So for some people, that would be uh, uh, would be an aggressive approach, and they would rather do uh, as I go my implants. And I totally agree. You know that would be an option, but patient denied this option, so we couldn't do it. But we got beautiful bone uh, uh, on the uh, maxilla, and now we uh, would go ahead and do the surgery. Uh, so we would use the conventional placement of the implants on the upper jaw, conventional implants placement on the lower jaw, and we would place uh, totally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, implants uh, on the maxilla and four on the um, on the mandible. Uh, patient uh, at that time uh, was considering doing porcelain work. I explained to her that her uh, bone and gum tissue is so uh, so so big and her uh, uh, you know bone clearance here is uh, probably about 25 millimeters for the upper and probably 22 for the lower uh, and uh, that would require a lot of uh, uh, acrylic or porcelain base uh, uh, for the uh, for the bridge work obviously to get her better profile her lips would be uh, support better with a profile procedure in, instead of just regular crown bridge work. Um, so we kind of uh, agreed on that. Uh, this is the picture of the impression stage. I'm just showing it now after everything healed. Uh, and this is a multi-unit case. So hybrid procedures on multi-unit uh, abutments. And uh, now we're going to go look at the temporary fixation. So uh, those implants were loaded immediately with the temporary uh, bridges. Uh, so we use her existing dentures, which were uh, nine years old, and we just transferred them into the fixed uh, solution for her. And uh, uh, that was a good uh, enough uh, solution for this patient uh, for the meantime. So now the patient comes for um, a final prosthetic work uh, to her general dentist, and uh, uh, that's how um, uh, it's done. So this is the impression with the uh, jig. The try-in. And you have a upper prosthetic wax set up and lower one. That, that is based on your um, prior appointment and where you select the smile line and the midline uh, with the uh, uh, wax rims.
You want to make sure patient has good lip support when she smiles, adequate tooth to lip ratio, good profile, all the wrinkles go away. Relaxed lip position. Want to make sure vertical is not excessive and not too small. Occlusal check. Occlusal can check. Make sure things are parallel. Tooth selection. And the final teeth. So this is a hybrid uh, prosthesis on the bottom and hybrid prosthesis on the top. Nice lip support, beautiful smile, full smile show, nice obliterated buccal corridors. In the profile view, we can see uh, good lip support and well-balanced face. Final smile. Glabella, straight line, aesthetic line of the face, right into the incisal tip. Good match, probably could afford to go a little bit more forward for more lip support but this is totally fine. Three quarter view. Smile with the three quarter view, good match. Another picture. Intraoral view, and you, you we can see that how much uh, gum and bone loss patient has. She has very good attached gingiva on her implants. Right side view, left side view, occlusal view. So it's a screw retained prosthesis. So all those abutments uh, were torqued prior and then the screws are torqued to 20 units, uh, 20 nanometers on a centimeter. These are all occlusal views, lower occlusal view. So this is the AP spread of the patient, and it's not that much, so we had to cut those two molars off because we just can't afford that big of the spread posteriorly. That you can see the outline of the titanium bar inside the prosthesis. And there's a repetition of the pictures we saw. So happy patient. Uh, this is uh, one of the approaches when we used uh, uh, the bilateral sinus lift, uh, rather large sinus lifts for this patient and uh, sometimes that's what patient want and uh, uh, could it be done any other way? Of course uh, it could, uh, but that's, uh, that's what the patient wanted. So thank you very much for your attention.